All right, let's do this. Hey everybody, I'm Taylor. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Whatever. Um, this is monstrous, monstrous, monstrous. Volume one. It's my special sound effects that I did not add in post. I did it live, well, recorded. So I know I'm that talented, folks. That talented. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a beast of a book. No pun intended. Uh, it, it covers. Okay. <laughs> Let me just sort of start over. This is Volume 1, Monstrous. The first 18 issues of an ongoing series of the same name, called Monstrous. Written by Marjorie Liu and uh, art by Sana Takeda with uh, lettering by Russ Wooten. I might have butchered the pronunciation of some of those names. I apologize. I'm going to butcher a lot in this video because, it, yeah, it's a chunky boy. And it's a <laughs> it's dense Dense people. Uh, okay, yeah. So this is an ongoing series. Like I said, uh, this is the. I, I'm guessing probably about the first half of the series. Although I don't know if they've announced an ending to it or anything. It, you can sort of tell there definitely is going to be an ending. <laughs> like Marjorie Liu's writing is definitely purposeful and it has a direction, and you know that the story is going somewhere. Although it does kind of meander and like have side things and the possibility of other series that spin off from this but the nature of the story is you can just sort of tell like it, it's heading in a direction i don't really know what the damn direction is sometimes but it's heading there so uh it took me about a week to read this which is kind of surprising um general generally i'm a pretty quick reader and i can read comic books like much more quickly than novels just because of the nature of the beast but this really even though it doesn't necessarily appear that like like the pages are you know that doesn't really appear that dense with the number amount of writing and stuff it is the, the storytelling itself it just kind of like chucks you into the action there's not a lot of explanation and like you just kind of get thrown into this world and you have to learn or learn as you go what the heck is going on and you still at the end of the 18 issues i don't even know if i really do um i think i have an idea and I have an, a notion as far as the main character and, and what's going on. But, like, it's, yeah, it's you, you're still... Like, Marjorie Lou does not hold your hand while writing this. She just kind of chucks you in there and, like, has a very dense... And, let's see, dense, it's a word of the day. <coughs> a very well-built, detailed world that you just kind of, like, have to learn about as you go. Because it's like, if something gets explained, like, there's a... At the end of most of the issues in here, there are is like something from uh, one like uh here it is uh professor tam tam who like gives you a little bit of page dialogue a tidbit of something in the world oh and that's a professor tam tam's a cat with three tails by the way at least three uh and, uh but that's still it's like just a little bit of a nugget of the world there's just so much going on in here like there's a glossary which is mostly uh cast of characters and and you kind of need it like the the four main characters micah high wolf or half wolf half wolf yeah, is the anti-hero slash protagonist. Uh, and we're going to get into a little bit of spoilers from here on out. So, And I'm also going to be reading some of this because I forget some of these names. There's so many of them going on. Um, Zin is a monster that's sort of trapped inside Micah. I think Venom. I like Venom. Honestly, a lot like Venom. <laughs> and uh, Kippa is a little girl, half fox, half human that travels along with Micah, and then Ren Memoriam, who's a two-tailed orange tabby cat, and Necomancer. Necomancer? I don't know. It, like, the words are all made up, people. They're all made up. I don't know if pronunciation matters, but whatever. Uh, and yeah, like, <laughs> there are parts of this book where I was really confused. And, and for the first volume of it, the first, like, probably third I think the general readers can be like, well, what in the goddamn hell is going on? Uh, because it, it's just kind of, you just kind of get thrust into things in the middle of a story. And then uh, you go backwards and forwards in time a little bit. Or you go into an internal dream state without warning that sort of explains things, but also sort of muddies the waters a bit. Uh, and so Micah, is, at the start of the story, is being in, sold into slavery because she's uh, an arcanum. Arcana? See, and this is where I need the, doc, the glossary. Uh Arcanic, Arcanic, uh, which is also like half human, half ancient god, or like not actually half, but like a mixed, a mixture of humans and ancient gods. Of and she's missing an arm, 
uh, which doesn't have too much to do with the half thing, but it's part, it's part of the story, and and is being sold into slavery, and hilarity ensues from there. No, no, just kidding. There's not a ton of humor to this book. There's a little, a few words and stuff, like a few little lines that are dropped in, and they're kind of funny. But like for the most part, it's a very serious, solemn tale. Uh, and Micah is not always uh, a likable protagonist. In a lot of ways, she's an antihero. She's trying to figure out her past. And her, and to figure out a direction in her future, and and also try to cope with this monster inside her that gets hungry and wants to eat things, and so and 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 Micah is also angry at the lower world and and bitter and has a lot of parental issues, and so she's not always nice, and the monsters not always nice, and they do some all not always nice things, some truly horrific things. Uh, and then the, the cast of characters, the supporting characters, with the exception of the little fox girls, adorable, and probably should have her own series at some point. Um, they're all, like, multifaceted and have different motivations and everything, too. So, like, it's a lot to keep up with. Um, the artwork is gorgeous by Sana Takeda. Like, fantastic and, and detailed and rich and moody and atmospheric. Uh, but there are a few transitional pages, not a ton, but, like, especially more towards the beginning where, like, I, I found myself like flipping back and forth in pages trying to figure out what the hell happened because a lot of the violence, thankfully, does happen off screen. You don't need to necessarily see it, um, but like there's so many characters in here, and they all sort of look a bit alike. And not not knocking the character design, I think it's gorgeous, but like trying to keep track of who is who in here is a chore, and and not always a pleasant chore. So like the gal the glossary at the back helps a bit, but like even after you know in a week I had forget forgotten sort of how it began, sort of. Who the main characters were because like they they'll show up those script ten episodes or issues and then they'll come back with their motivations sort of intact and everyone has different motivations they're all trying to get uh, Micah for one reason or another or something she's carrying for one reason or another or the combination thereof and then there's like five different factions that might want to start a war might not want to start a war might want to end the world might want to save the world lots of like different political intrigue like political factions and intrigue going on and a lot of yeah everyone's in it for themselves but also they're all chasing after this the mica who might end the world or might save it so it's a little bit tropey in that regards as far as the main character but it's still really well done it's just kind of like it it, it kind of reminds me of like an nk jemison novel like it, you just kind of get chucked into it and like if you if you sink or swim which actually there's a sequence in here that like kind of plays off of that. So um, you you have to be patient with this if you're going to read it and and understand that you're not going to necessarily get what's going on. Like 18 issues in, and I'm still like I don't know. Um, but it, it, there's enough to it. Like the art alone is enough to carry this series and make me want to read it. And the character design, while I said a lot of characters do look alike, they do. But I think that's great because in the world, like really, a lot of people look kind of alike, and a lot of things look kind of alike. So. Not that this is realistic. There's giant monsters and aliens and not aliens. Well, maybe, maybe aliens. You're not really ever sure what the heck these ancient things are. They're ancient. They might be gods. They might be aliens. Whatever. Um, and yeah, the world itself is like a steampunkish kind of sort of, but they don't really focus on the steampunky elements a whole lot. Uh, interpretation of Asia, ish. It doesn't uh, really translate into like any true version of Asia, as far as I know. But and I know I'm kind of all over the place with this review, and I sort of apologize, but the book is kind of all over the place. However, once you sort of distill it down to its essence, it's a chaste book. It really is. Uh, like I said, every, pretty much everyone in here, every faction, everything else is chasing after the most important girl in the world. And the most important girl in the world doesn't know what the hell's going on. So that's that's the book. It's not a whole lot of spoilers. You sort of figure that right off the bat. Um but then, then the, the and everything gets fleshed out and branched out from there. And by the end of the book, you're still not necessarily sure of what uh, Micah's real motivations are. You know, she's looking for someone from her past, trying to figure out also other parts of her past that are left to go left to her, trying to collect certain things. And then that, and and yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, and then everyone else is chasing after her. So think Fifth Element. Think the any Brian K. Vaughan series. Think almost. It, fantasy tropish novels like you know you have to find the one thing to get to the other thing to the other thing and that's sort of the the weakness of this um i think is like there, there's there's a couple i i the, the the coloring uh is very moody and dark which i love and it's atmospheric but i think 
for it would be helpful if different scenes or different characters were colored slightly differently just to give a little bit more uh the reader a little bit more of a helping hand um it's a nitpick but i think it's there like i mean it's everything is just kind of this sort of washed out dark uh sepia palette and get over here you son of a like all, the whole world i mean it is it is gorgeous i mean it, like it's one of the best drawn comics i've ever seen so like i really am kind of picking picking it picking at the nits folks picking at the nits but uh I do think that, yeah, like, it could be a little bit more helpful, especially because there's so many, like, side characters and stuff that get introduced and then disappear and come back later. And, like, having having some clue as to who they are that's a little bit more, like, visual would be helpful. Um, and that, yeah, that, 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 the fact that the main A plot is kind of a video game kind of plot is also, I think, a little bit of a weakness. Like, you go here, you collect this. Oh, no, you got that, but what you really need is this. Oh, no, you got to go to get that. You find out that's not really what you need, so you got to go here to get this. Oh, no, okay, you get captured, and then you got to break out, and then you have to go find this and get this and this, this, and this, and this, and this. And collect this and collect this. Oh, and then you find out what this leads to this. It's kind of, it's Zelda. It's, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's not awful. And it's just kind of, that's, that's, that's it for the main plot. Uh, it gets like surrounded by like, a, like I said, a whole lot of political stuff and a whole lot of intrigue, but the main plot it is, is a, is a video game chase sequence, not a chase sequence, but you know, a fetch sequence. Uh, it, again, I am kind of nitpicking. I enjoyed this it, and it, Took, but it took me some. It took me. It did take me a lot of time to get into it. Like I, I kind of was like debating whether or not I was going to finish it and review it, just because I was like, I you have to be in the mood for something like this. And you, you kind of, it's one of those you don't really want to force yourself to read. I never really want to force myself to read, but I found myself for a little bit in here, especially in the beginning, having to force myself to go to the next issue, next page, next whatever, just to keep going. Um, once you get into like, once you get into say chapter three which I think is issue three, really, or maybe four or five, uh, then I think it'll, it's enough to hook you, but, like, it doesn't... It, and it's not that the first issue doesn't have a lot of action to it. It's just kind of... It, it, like, I, I think the beginning of the book could have used a little bit more hand-holding for the audience, just a bit, just a smidge, uh, just to get the audience hooked a little bit faster. And again, we are nitpicking. We, we being Taylor, we being me, we being first person, whatever. I'm nitpicking, uh, because like I, like I said, I really did enjoy it. I am going to see where this goes. I'm not giving this away, uh, because like it, it requires more than one read. I did only do one read on this. I only had time for one read because I, I had to get this review out. Uh, but it deserves more than one. And I think it'll take more than one in that regard. I really do think it's kind of like an NK Jemison science fiction fantasy novel. Like there's enough packed into it where you really want to like dissect it and like study it and savor it. Uh, view, look at the glorious pictures, look at the fantastic art, and like really kind of like sit down and piece out whatever he, all the motivations are, what everyone is doing and stuff. But I think that's better served when this is a complete series. I really, I think it'll be worth revisiting when it's all said and done. I would really, really not recommend uh, getting this as a monthly. I think it'll be very frustrating if you do. Um, I mean, you can collect the issues, obviously, but I would recommend if you're going to read it, I would read it in volumes because... I think you're going to forget what the hell half these characters are. Uh, you're going to just bang your head against the wall, which there's a character here that bangs their head against the thing right off the bat. Uh, it, and it's just kind of, I think it'll be too much to, to take in for most people and, and uh, too much to try and retain. Like, I, I know if I were to, like, read one issue, like, and I put it down for a month, I'd pick it up, uh, you know, from the starting point of the next month. I'd be like, what in the goddamn hell? What did I miss? What? And you feel like I think you'd probably have to go back and reread a couple months every month just to get it. Like in the week period, I I like I I had struggled uh, with some of it, and I don't. I think some of that's purposeful. I don't think you're supposed to understand all of it right off the bat. It was an interesting, interesting choice, and uh, I'm along for it. But you gotta you gotta know you're just not gonna like get it all. So, like you're just not. Uh, so I don't know. Like I said, I know this one's kind of all over the place. But I really wanted to dive into this because it's been sitting on my shelf for a while, and it was sort of an intimidating book to kind of open up and try and get into. Not not because I don't I thought it'd be crazy hard to do, but like every time you know you read the first couple pages and you're like, what the heck? All right, I guess I'll keep going. Or you're like, wait, do I have to back up and start over and go for it? And yeah, and I think I think it'll you'll be intimidated for a bit for at least a. Right, <laughs> all of it. 
<laughs> no, no um, I really enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read it. Let me know what your thoughts on it are. I, I know it's run a, it's won a boatload of awards. I've been nominated for a boatload. I think rightly so. And I think um, I'm looking forward to seeing what the next end game is. I know, this is the first issues 1 through 13. I believe 35 issues are out now as of the time of this video, which is sort of th three quarters of the way through 2021. Um, and I don't know if they've been published in a while. I, the last one I could sort of find, I think, was in January or February. So I don't know if they're on hold or if that was it. Not really sure. I, I didn't. Wikipedia said it was ongoing, but I didn't do a whole lot more research than that because it kind of I like going into these reviews a little bit uh, unrehearsed and unscheduled and unresearched. But I did think this is at least required a little bit of a cursory glance at other things. So that's kind of all I got. Uh, even if you're uh, female antihero with a monstrous villain, monstrous, monstrous, kid, monstrous, spelled monstrous, not monstrous. Even if you're a villain, maybe hero, and the fate of the world depends upon you. I don't know. And you live in a matriarchal society with uh, with giant cat people and cats and all that. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm you know what? I'm not gonna end this one quite yet. One of my favorite characters is <laughs> the cat, the Ren. Uh, what the hell's it, Casey? I remember the names of it. It's kind of like Master Ren Memoriam. 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 Memoriam is one of my favorite characters. It's a snarky. Cat uh, that speaks well English or whatever the heck the main the main language is in this world, and uh, can speak with the dead and has some necromantic powers. Although they call him necromancy here, necromancy whatever, and uh, the motivations shift and the, and like honestly the alliances shift with this cat. Uh, the, you know, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal, you stupid cat. Kind of like a real cat. You know, cats are kind of evil. And I believe the number of tails are relevant to the power. I think the more tails you have, the more powerful you are. I think maybe not. I don't know. But uh, yeah, a trickster cat with two tails is probably my favorite character in here. So, uh, yeah, all right, that, that, that's the end of that, that part of rambling. Pick it up. Uh, judge for yourself. Uh, I don't know. It's This, I think, is still in print or you can find it. I know there's also trade paperbacks you can get, but this is a glorious hardcover vol uh, volume. Really nice paper quality, really well bound. Uh, so if you can afford this bad boy, I'd say get this bad boy. And yeah, okay. Anyways, as I was saying, if you uh, find yourself with one arm being sold as a slave and, uh, you know, have the power to destroy the world trapped in you with an ancient monster. Maybe, maybe go ahead and destroy the world, but, but don't be a dick about it. All right, see ya.